Welcome back, my golly vibes, brothers and sisters. Today's episode is on Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is somebody who's been very hard-headed when it comes to Jesus over the last couple of years for a good while. You know, he's somebody you probably would have looked at back in the day like, oh, yeah, he's an atheist or he's, you know, somebody who's just lost in the sauce. But interesting thing is the Lord's been working on his heart. The Lord's been working on Joe Rogan's heart more and more and more. And you can see with different episodes when he's talking about Christians, when he's talking about Jesus. And I just want to take you guys through a, a little timeline of what he used to think about the Lord to now saying we need Jesus. Pretty interesting timeline. Check it out, you guys. Christianity, at the end of the day, with no proof, everything is mythology. Everything with no proof. With proof, then you examine the proof. It's super simple. And anybody that argues against that is just, you're just biased. You, you have your own ideas. If you have some proof that there was a God, that this God had one son, and he made this son come down and get the f beat out of him and nailed to a board so that we could all have no sin. Do you have, can you show me some studies? Can you give me, do you, do you have a box of evidence that you can pull out and we can examine all the different pieces that points to the undeniable conclusion that that's true? Because if you don't, then it's a myth. Then you're, you're believing mythology. Doesn't mean it's not real, but if you, if you put all your f***ing eggs in that basket and you don't have any proof at all, well, you're entering into this weird world where you don't pay attention to sh**. He, he also went to saying how it's stupid to believe that, right? Our proof. What is our proof? Our proof is filling the Lord. Actually filling the Lord, filling the Holy Spirit. You know, it's not like we just are just, you know, don't feel God. You know what I mean? Like, the Lord has touched me. The Lord has touched me in many different ways. Supernaturally, the Lord came into my life and completely changed and shifted my desires. And I feel the Holy Spirit in me every day from when I wake up to when I go to sleep. But interesting enough, he's saying that it's stupid. Pretty much. Actually, no, he did say it on the, on this certain episode that it's stupid to believe that. Right. And he just it, it just kept kept the Lord kept working on his heart. Check this video. If Christianity had been any other religion, Christianity is the most mocked religion. Like we, we want to look at religions with uh, respect and dignity, whether it's Islam or Hinduism. We look at those with respect and dignity. And even if they have practices that we don't agree with. So now it goes into, it went from it's stupid to believe, put all your eggs in one basket, it's stupid to believe this. It's a fairy tale. It's like, where's the where's the complete proof at? To, we need to have respect for different religions. So the Lord's working on his heart. You see how it goes from rock solid to, you know, kind of, you know, moist in the soil a little bit. With, we sort of give them this leeway that it's a part of their religion. Yeah, Christianity. Christianity, is, Christianity is the the most openly, easily mocked mm. of all religions. It's it's the most derived for whatever reason. So now he's he's noticing that Christians get mocked. Jesus gets mocked, right? And his heart is getting softened to the fact. You see what I'm going? You see where I'm going with this? Now check this video out. Like Christianity wouldn't be here right now if there wasn't a core thread in it that had a beautiful message in it. It's it makes people nicer people. I actually had a really big conversation this weekend with a, a very good friend about it, about another very good friend who's very religious. And we were saying, like, I think for some people it's an amazing framework and a guide to live your life. I really do believe that. You hear what this man is saying? It makes people nicer people. It's a great framework and a great guide to live your life. To be a Christian, he's saying. <laughs> now watch this video. Latest one. As time rolls on, people are going to understand the need to have some sort of divine structure to things. Some so The need. As time rolls on, people are going to understand the need. The need. <laughs> He's talking about himself. As time rolled, he understood the need to have some kind of divine structure. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> it went from, oh, it's stupid to believe this, to people need some kind of divine structure. Some sort of divine structure to things. Some sort of belief in the sanctity of love and of truth. And a lot of that comes from religion. A lot of people's 
moral compass and the guidelines that they've used to follow to live a just and righteous life has come from religion. And unfortunately, a lot of very intelligent people, they dismiss all the positive aspects of religion. Including Joe Rogan was one of those very intelligent people who dismissed. (laughs) Spence talk about himself here. Spence talk about himself. Is they think that the stories are mere superstitious fairy tales that, you know, they're, they have no place in this modern world and, you know, we're inherently good and your ethics are based on your old moral compass and we all have one. And that's not necessarily true. We need, to, we need Jesus. <laughs> I think for real. Like if he came back now, it'd be great. Like Jesus, if you're thinking about coming back right now, now's a good time. Yeah, pretty soon. Yeah. Now's good. Don't tell me. The Lord does not work on the hard hearts. This, I just showed you a clip of this man completely downing the Lord, downing Christians, downing the Bible. To a clip of him saying, we need Jesus. <laughs> ah! Hallelujah. Look what the Lord could do. Look what the Lord has done. <laughs> Look what the Lord has done. Glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord can salt in anyone's heart. When I came to the Lord, I know my friends was like, oh my goodness. He's got you. He's got him. But that's usually what the Lord does. He gets, he pulls out the craziest one in a bunch. So the other ones could be like, oh wow, he can change. If Joe Rogan can get to the point where he says we need Jesus, there is nobody in your family. There's nobody in your friends. There's nobody in your circle. The Lord cannot change. That's what this video is about. That's what this video is about. Encouragement. Hallelujah. Encouragement. Continue to walk with the Lord and be transformed by the Lord. Continue to allow the Lord's light to shine through you for your family and friends to see. Hallelujah. Joe Rogan just kept having different people come on the show. Different people come on the show. Talk about the Lord. Talk about the Lord. Beautiful. You know, there's peace over here. There's freedom over here. You know what I mean? And the Lord just kept touching them, kept touching them, and kept touching them. And portions, and portions, impartation, impartation, and portions, and portions, impartation, impartation. Literally, did he know his heart was softening up? That's what the Lord does. As hard as Joe Rogan was, as stiff and stern as Joe Rogan was, even the Lord was like, yeah, I'll get him. He'll come. He's still coming, you know? He may not be fully there yet, but the fact that he just went on his podcast and said, we need Jesus. Like, you have to understand, you have to understand how far of a message that is from who he used to be and how he used to believe. You have to understand how far he's come. His mindset has been shifted with faith the size of a mustard seed. You can move mountains. Hallelujah. In Hebrew, mountains speak of mindsets. So with faith the size of a mustard seed, you can shift somebody's mindset. With a little bit of revelation being planted into somebody's garden, you can shift their mountain. Hallelujah, you're not hearing me. That's exactly what happened to Joe Rogan. His mountains got shifted. The Lord Jesus did a work in him, and the Lord Jesus is still doing a work in him. He's softening up his heart. Hallelujah. There is nobody that the Lord cannot reach. There's nobody too far out. There's nobody too far down that the Lord can't pull up and say, here's my hand. Come, son. Come, daughter. Hallelujah. There's nobody, nowhere. You can't hide from the Lord. I know there's a lot of people out there probably thinking they're too far gone. You're not. There's a lot of people out there probably thinking that their family or their friends are too far gone. They're not. They can all repent. They can all come into truth. They can all come into life. Life. The Lord is saying, come. I'm here. The Lord is just waiting on you, to be quite honest. <laughs> the Lord has never went anywhere. The Lord has always been there. He's just waiting on you to submit. Hallelujah. To come into truth. The Lord has been saying, come on. Grab my hand. I'll lift you up. I'll jump, and I'll catch you. Hallelujah. The Lord has been saying that. It's you that has fear in you. But the Lord did not give you fear. Give you power, love, and sound mind. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ. I just thought this was very interesting to see. 
where he's come from to where he's at now. He can show you the transformation is slowly being, slowly happening. That's exactly what the Lord would do. Amen. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about this video. I thought it was beautiful to see the transition. Hallelujah. To see the transformation happening in this man's heart. Hallelujah. But let me know what you think. I'll read some of the comments. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you. Shalom.